Okay, we can see very clearly that our devices have rebooted and it did take about anywhere between eight to 10 minutes for this to happen. Now there's another thing I wanna point out. I had changed the color of the UCS uh, Fabric Interconnect B to green and uh, it changed it back as a result of uh, this uh, reload and this configuration change. So I just wanna make you guys aware of that. Now the other thing that I want to highlight here is what I'm going to refer to as our order of operations. So when it comes to order of operations, what I want to do is I want to focus on what it is we're going to be configuring and how we're going to implement the configuration. And the best place to do that is going to be on our blackboard. So what I'm doing is I'm going to be configuring what we could best refer to as a UCS cluster. So I'm going to say U. CS cluster. Now this cluster is going to require me to enter a few components. First what I'm going to do is I'm going to implement step one which is I'm going to assign an IP address. Now that IP address is going to have to have a network mask so it's going to have to have a mask and it also stands to reason I'm going to have to have some type of default gateway that I'm going to use. Now We'll come up with addressing as we go, but the objective here is, is recognize that's going to be one of the first things that I'm going to do. Then the other thing is, is I need to really pay attention to this idea of the cluster. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna create Fabric Interconnect A, give it a name. I'm gonna create Fabric Interconnect B and give it a name. And what I'm gonna to have to do is I'm gonna to have to select one of these guys to be in charge, something we refer to as the primary. We have two roles when it comes to our cluster as we covered in our theory. We have the primary and then we have what we call the subordinate. So one guy is going to be in charge of the cluster and what he's going to do is he's actually going to host a virtual IP address that I'm going to assign. So in all actuality I'm going to issue three of these addresses. One for each fabric interconnect and one for the virtual IP that's going to be hosted by the primary device that's going to come up in my cluster. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to bring up Fabric Interconnect A first. That's going to make Fabric Interconnect A the primary. Now the other part of this is, is what I'm going to do is I'm going to have to specify what I'm going to call my cluster mode. Now there are scenarios where I could have only one Fabric Interconnect possibly. It's not an ideal situation by any stretch of the imagination, but it does exist as a possible and accepted configuration. Now, in order for me to do the implementation, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna start on A, as I said, and I'm gonna tell it that it's gonna be part of a cluster, therefore it's going to know at some point it's gonna be communicating to another device. For our configuration purposes, that's going to be our subordinate Fabric Interconnect. Just keep in mind that I can have configurations where I only have one FI. However, understand that that FI can only connect to one IOM, which means I'm only going to have pathing from my chassis to my northbound assets, my SAN and my LAN, via one link. So there's not going to be an alternate FEX or IOM module in the UCS that would be connecting to Fabric Interconnect A. The left IOM would be connecting to Fabric Interconnect A. The left must connect to Fabric Interconnect B. We're not allowed to connect both IOMs to a single Fabric Interconnect, even if we're operating in a scenario where we only have one Fabric Interconnect. So let's not let, get that confused. Now, the other part of this is, is the cluster mode is going to require me to also specify a password that I'm going to use. And again, I shared that password configuration with you guys. And then ultimately what I'm going to do is, like I said, I'm going to assign it a host name. And that's pretty much going to be the gist of the configuration on Fabric Interconnect A. Now that's going to leave me Fabric Interconnect B. When it comes to FIB, pretty much all I'm going to do is I'm going to give it a name and I'm going to tell it to attach to the cluster. So this device is going to pretty much auto detect the primary and pull its configurations from it. So to make this real, all we're going to do is start doing the configurations on our individual devices and the best place to start is going to be on 
Fabric Interconnect A. Now I know I'm on Fabric Interconnect A because I have UCS1 uh, up and visible on my screen. You guys can't see it, but it's uh, just a tab that I have for my configuration here. And what I'm going to do is I have an option now. My option tells me I can use the console for configuration or I can use a graphical user interface or GUI to configure this FI. Now, the GUI is going to be a Java-based client that runs inside the fabric of the, of the, inside of the Fabric Interconnect itself. It's not a very reliable method. It is a method by which we can do the configuration. It's just the console is just so much easier. So that's going to be what I want to demonstrate. So I'm going to type console. And what I'm going to do is hit enter. And that's going to bring me into the remaining config. Now, I've got situations that could be happening here. And the system is not going to automatically assume that this is a scratch install. This could be where I may be repairing a failed Fabric Interconnect. I might want to bring this up new, or I might want to be able to do a restoration. Now, if I'm going to bring it up new, I'm going to type setup. We can see this syntax right here, setup, clearly illustrated right there. So I'm going to say setup, hit enter. And what it's going to do is I have chosen to set up a new Fabric Interconnect. Do I wish to continue? Well, obviously I want to continue. So let me get rid of this um, highlighting here. Do I want to enforce strong passwords? I'm going to say no. And I'm going to enter my admin password. We said we would use capital NX OS 12345 as our password. And it's going to ask me now about my cluster status. Is this Fabric Interconnect part of a cluster? Select no for standalone. Yes is going to say yes, I'm part of a cluster. So I'm going to say yes. And that's going to bring this device up. Now, of the cluster, which one is this? Is this switch A or is this switch B? Or is this Fabric Interconnect A or Fabric Interconnect B would be a more accurate way of saying it. So I'm going to say this is A. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to specify a name. I'm going to say S6200. And all I'm going to do at this particular juncture is just hit enter. Now, what address do I want to use to manage this particular device? And that address is going to be one that I'm going to pick arbitrarily. I'm going to say 192.168. I'm going to say 10.101. Hit enter. Now I need to give it a mask. We'll give it a slash 24. And then what I'm going to do is specify my gateway. I'll say 192.168.10.1 or 254. We'll pick an address at the end of the range. Now, since this device is the primary, I'm going to give it the cluster IP address. That's that VIP that I was talking about earlier. That address is going to be 192.168.10. And what I want to do is I'm going to say 100. Enter. Now, I can configure a DNS server. I don't have one. I can configure a domain name server. I don't have one, so I'm not really worried about that. Do I want to join a UCS central configuration? No, that's not part of the scope of this class, but it's definitely a, what a lot of organizations do. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to be confronted or given the option of being able to write my configuration, and obviously it's going to require this device to reload. So I'm going to say yes. And the moment that I hit enter here, what we're going to find is, is the system is going to immediately reload. It's going to reboot. It's applying the configuration. It's actually writing that configuration to the XML side of the house. And what that's going to do is it's going to first do a baseline config on the, this component. Now, I have to wait for this Fabric Interconnect to come up and become operational before I can really do anything else on what will be the subordinate. Because remember, the subordinate has to connect to the primary in order to be able to pull its configurations from its UCSM config. This is going to take place via that L1, L2 link that I described on the blackboard. So once this is up and running and everything's good to go, what we're going to see is, is that this system is going to be set up to where it looks just like it did before we destroyed it. But keep in mind, it is different. So what we're going to do is we're going to log into it. And then what I want to do is I want to access a few components and just illustrate the changes. So we said admin, NX OS 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, where the NX is capitalized. And we can see that I have 
access. Now, there's a command I want to show you guys right now. It's going to be show cluster, and what I'm going to do is close show cluster state, and it's going to give me some information. It's going to give me the cluster ID. It's also going to give me the cluster or this device's state. Notice it's up. It's in the process of doing an election, so it's trying to pick a primary, and what it sees here is, is B is actually unresponsive. And that should make sense because we haven't configured B to do anything yet. And since it's not configured, notice it says here HA is not ready or HA not ready. Now what that's implying or what that's talking about is high availability. Remember, we have a cluster. And the object of a cluster is, is to ensure the fact that if I lose one of my fabric interconnects, I can file over to the other. Now, there are two things that I want to highlight here. When it comes to control plane mechanisms, the fabric interconnects are active standby. The primary is where we do the configurations. We rely on the UCSM in the primary and the L1, L2 connections between the two devices to push configurations to the subordinate. But for the purposes of forwarding data, in an active cluster, each fabric interconnect is going to be servicing data requests and data replies servicing traffic in an active, active configuration. So let's not lose sight of that and get confused here as we're bringing this process up. This high availability is for the purposes of administration. So what I want to do right now is, is that now that this is up and connected, what I want to do is I want to move over to the other Fabric Interconnect. And let's see if we can't do the rest of the config. So I'm going to go to UCS2. And as you see, UCS2 looks just like UC, uh, the UCS1 or FAB or Fabric Interconnect 1. And I'm going to go ahead and do the same configuration here. I'm going to say I want to use the console to configure it. Now, the installer has detected the presence of a peer Fabric Interconnect. This Fabric Interconnect will be added to the cluster. Yes, I want you to do it. And it's going to do it automatically. All I need to do is give it the password necessary to log in to the primary. So I'm going to say NXOS12345, hit enter, and what we're going to do is it's going to connect and it's going to pull all of its configurational requirements that are going to be cluster centric from the primary. So you can see here it's retrieving its configuration. Now all I need to do is give it its own IP address. I'm going to say 192.168.10.102 and what I'm going to do after I've got the configuration here is pretty much just hit enter because everything else is going to be learned from the primary. Notice it has the switch number 192.168.10.101. That's the IP address. Notice it pulled the mask. It has the cluster IP address 192.168.10.100 and we give it its own address. All we need to do now is just implement the save and get the system running. So if I hit yes, hit enter, all I'm going to do is I'm going to save and ultimately that should bring this device up and make it operational. So let's see what happens. Configuration file OK and ultimately it should let me connect. So now if I type admin, I'm going to type nxos12345. I want to re-execute that show cluster state command. It's still kind of loading, so I probably didn't give it enough time to, to percolate here. Because remember, we've got that election process and everything going on in the background. Let me see if I can switch over to the other device and re-execute the command here. Show cluster state. There we go. Now notice I have up, I'm the primary. B is up. B is the subordinate. HA is not available at this time and the reason being is that there are no devices that are being detected by this fabric interconnect southbound. Now remember I alluded to the idea of port roles. We have this idea of a characteristic behavioral pattern of a given port based on what role I assign to it. Now the roles that we looked at loosely earlier were server ports. Server ports are going to be ports that are going to connect down to the 
blades. So they're going to be pointing towards or connected directly to the IOMs, which is going to allow them to, by extension, connect to the 5108 chassis. Now, another type of interface that we talked about or we saw when we looked at this from the very, very beginning was we had uplinks. Those are going to be the links that we're going to use to connect to our networks. So once this is up and operational, these particular devices um, that are going to be configured, we now have a stepping off point to be able to start managing these devices and get some graphical user visibility with regard to the nature of our Fabric Interconnects via the UCSM client software. So now that this is up and running and we have the interconnections in place, the only thing that I want to show you right now is I want to show you guys the Nexus operating system. The NXOS operating system on any of these devices. I'll just say connect to NXOS for 5A and then I execute the show run command. What we're going to see here is, is that there is a whole heck of a lot less syntax and commands that are configured on this UCS on this Fabric Interconnect. We have just a handful of configurational states. We have our uh, VLANs that have been created. We've got the management context, but notice our interfaces have absolutely no configuration under them whatsoever. To include, if I come in and say show interface status again, what we're going to see here is, is that these interfaces now have no config whatsoever. So remember earlier, these two interfaces were what we were referring to as server ports. That capability has been stripped from these interfaces as a direct result of our erase, reload, and rebuild of these configs. So what we need to do is we need to start extending port states back to these interfaces so that they can do their jobs. And their jobs are going to be based, like I said, on what it is they're going to be connecting to. We are going to have interfaces that are going to connect to server devices. We're going to have interfaces that are going to connect to network devices. We're going to have interfaces that are going to connect to our storage area networking devices. So let's not take too long. Let's go ahead and fire up our remote desktop session and access these FIs via the UCSM client and do the management and get everything set back up and working. And then what we'll do is we'll revisit these screens a few times just to make certain that we have a firm understanding of what's happening in our topology with regard to our step-by-step -step configuration changes that we're going to be making via the UCSM client.